Thanks to Adeshawa Odushoga for that report. And as we always say, you know, sometimes justice delayed, um, you know, may not necessarily be justice denied. Uh, 13 years later, you know, they still, of course, have found their way to court. Let's bring the conversation, of course, uh, away from Guinea to Nigeria. Travelers, as well as residents, have expressed worries over the rate of uh, which kidnappers waylay drivers and take them into custody. Helpless road users across major highways across the whole of Nigeria. Federal roads like the Lagos Ibado Highway, Lagos Abelkota Expressway, and the Abuja Kaduna Expressway, which of course has become very, very popular for kidnapping, amongst others, have been dreadful to road users. Kidnapping has become more or less a lucrative business in Nigeria. Some individuals abduct people in exchange for ransom. Just last week, kidnap kingpin John Ewa, a.k.a. Lion John, alleged to be behind a series of high-profile kidnap incidents in Bayelsa State, was arrested by operatives of Operation Puff Adder in Abuja. We're joined this morning by security analyst Onyekachi Adekoya. He's a managing director, PR24 Risk Management Consulting. Uh, thanks for joining us, Mr. Adekoya. Yeah, thank you for having me. Good morning to your viewers. All right. Uh, lately, it appears kidnappers are becoming resistant to all strategies put in place by the police and all the security agencies as they now, of course, operate in broad daylight on busy roads across the country. Would you say that we maybe are not approaching this the right way? Um, I think the government is doing the best that it is. Okay. Uh, if you look at crime statistics in Nigeria, uh, you would see that the government is quite overwhelmed. And when you track crime stats by crime actors, you also see that over 51% of the crime statistics in Nigeria are perpetrated by citizens themselves. Before you then begin to talk about the known, the bandits, the armed organized groups, and you know these, the, the rest of the people, just tracking crime statistics by um, fatalities and even the incidents themselves, uh, the 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 statistics and data will suggest that Nigeria as a society um, is going through some form of um, societal disintegration. Um, which is more or less compounded by the macroeconomic challenges we're having because the, the propensity to crime is quite high. And what we're seeing on the outside is that um, the structures that we have to fight crime, uh, improve security, are quite overwhelmed. So the, the government forces are pretty much playing catch-up. Uh, any, if you, I mean, look at the crime stats, if you see incidents type, Somebody stabbed somebody to death. Another person shot two people to death. Um, there's a disagreement, a quarrel, it leads to death. RTAs, for example, are also a major problem. As a matter of fact, road traffic accidents are killing more people than bandits and um, kidnappers put together. So we, what we're seeing symptomatically is a government that is faced with a hydra-headed, multi-actor uh, problem. And unfortunately... Uh, that creates like an avenue for certain crimes like kidnapping to thrive because even the police themselves are overwhelmed the amount of time resources it takes to resolve a kidnap case it's like the case in the judiciary where you have a, a judge faced with over 500 cases 300 cases an ipo who should investigate a particular incident may also be confronted with that much a case so um, uh, the the reward the reward for crime is higher than the cost of 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 an event like that happening. So that's why we're seeing um, north to south um, people taking opportunity of um, the inadequacies of our structure to um, make quick buck. I, I think that's just the assessment. It's not like we're not doing. We're not getting some things right structurally, but uh, that's a bigger analysis of the picture. I mean, really, is a hydra-headed monster, like you've mentioned. But let's talk about some of the ways in which we can handle this. Unfortunately, uh, when we talk about kidnapping in the Western world, you hear in countries like America, where in, 
the media, they will say that America does not negotiate with terrorists. But what we've seen here in Nigeria is that more Nigerians have taken their own security into their hands as they've had to pay ransom for themselves and their family members. What is the way forward and how can we as citizens, let's talk from the part of the citizens, how can we be more careful? What measures can we put in place to protect ourselves? Okay, thank you. Um, no, there's no quick fix to the to this um, problem that we have uh, because some of it is also macroeconomic. If you say, how do we fix this problem? If people had better jobs and better sense of belonging and a sense of direction and a sense of hope, perhaps, um, you know, the level of crime will drop. Uh, but when we look at the statistics in Nigeria, there is no correlation between education, unfortunately, and incidence of crime. Uh, so it then becomes um, another problem, maybe a societal um, orientation. Uh, sorry, I, I did say there is no correlation between macroeconomic viability or prosperity and crime. Um, there, there seems not to be a correlation. What we seem to see is that the orientation is bad and poor. So to solve this, maybe the National Orientation Agency has to do a bit more. Uh, maybe the family value system has to be also reworked and looked at. Uh, maybe fathers also earn a bit more and are brought up properly themselves. Maybe they can also take care of their children better. That's looking at it from a broader perspective. If you say go kinetic force, you can't kill everybody in Nigeria. You can't turn every state into a barracks. You can't turn every home into um, a, a military installation. Uh, you can only provide security within the context and the limit of security provided by the state. So if the state itself is awash with incidents of crime, there's not much the incidents can do, you, the citizens can do. So that's why you see all the calls to arms, arm yourself. This Mr. Dekoya, uh, we, we, we need to rework uh, our national... So we need to rework our national security strategy, okay? Um, the first quick... Um, low-hanging fruits we can achieve is go state police. If you go state police, you can increase the amount of personnel assigned to these issues of security and relieve the Nigerian police force, relieve the army um, from some of the, the issues they have. The army has over 32 operations in over 32 states in the country. That's too much for an army that has become quite domesticated. So if you deal with the issues of security, at least provide some, some number, take policing local, uh, you can then begin to look at the issues of um, um, the economy, look at the issue of the value system, look at the issues of our near neighbors. Uh, there are plenty of things to look at. Our national security doctrine itself has to be reworked. Uh, we need to now develop in-house capability and capacity to deal with some of these issues of crime. There's also the issue of geopolitics. We need to play our international policies correctly and our international diplomacy in terms of even sourcing weapons, where we can get those weapons from, because some of the problems we're also having is an equipment problem. So uh, there's no quick fix to it. It will take us about 10 to 15 years if, we, if, if we're lucky to, to address more of these things. Well, that's quite, uh, quite some time uh, to deal with this, you know, and of course that uh, it depends on if we start now. But... I also want you to, you know, uh, speak about the latest one that, of course, broke headlines a few days ago, the uh, Lion John or Leon John, you know, that was arrested by uh, um, operators of Operation Puff Adder in Abuja. Um, while we give credit to the security agencies, um, I want you to speak a little bit about this. You know, he's still, of course, a suspect, you know, hasn't been found guilty of anything. But I want you to speak a little bit, you know, about um, the resources that these security agencies have at their disposal what more do you think that they need? Would you say better funding, better training um, with regards kidnapping? Um, because, you know, this, of course, spreads into other cases of kidnapping, you know, that they should be able to solve. Nobody needs to pay a ransom. You know, and, you know I mean, we're talking about ransom of hundreds of millions of naira to bandits and to kidnappers. But using his case as an example, in what ways do you think that, you know, operatives need to be better equipped? Yeah, so, um, I mean, using the case as, um, I, I'm sure his case, he had been tracked for some time, became a person of interest. Um, so some intelligence work definitely went into it. Uh, I can say to you very happily that um, the Nigerian security forces have some equipment, investigative equipment, that can aid them in locating pinpoints 
such persons of interest like um, John. So I don't think it's a problem with equipment because we have some of those. The DSS has, the police has its own equipment. Um, in terms of the investigative competencies for some of these anti-crime, anti-kidnapping squads, you, you will be surprised. They are quite efficient. They are quite drilled. They know their onions. Uh, what they need sometimes a bit more is logistics, funding, uh, the vehicles to move from point to point, uh, because it's like um, you're fighting Boko Haram sometimes. You have 400 soldiers, um, the battalion tasked with a particular effort doesn't have more than four vehicles. They are not even A vehicles, they are just B vehicles. So you, you have 400 soldiers, but you can't bring them to the fight. So logistics sometimes also impacts on us very negatively. Uh, I know the police lacked logistics. Uh, we must thank states like Lagos State Government who are investing heavily in providing uh, the police logistics. So more logistics, I would say. Um, yeah, the equipment they have can also come under some pressure. You know, so more of some of those um, equipment, um, each of the state governors can intervene by providing them some of these um, assets. Uh, then more personnel, because um, investigation takes time. Uh, and, and that's why you see that, you know, it's it's one one victory here, one victory there. Or you have uh, special forces like the IRT, uh, which are very specialized unit. They come under a lot of pressure and demand. Then they force themselves into a lot of provision because the expectations are high. Uh, they result into a lot of backhand tactics, you know. So if you had more time, more personnel, more logistics, and maybe more training. So, Absolutely. but the critical problem here is personnel. If the number of their persons can be increased, hopefully some other issues can be looked at. All right, um, Oikachi Adekoya, thank you so much for your time this morning. It's an ongoing conversation. Uh, we hope that um, the immediate steps and the very necessary steps are put in place to end this court. Thanks for your time.